Hi and welcome to a Jilly Bean Soup tutorial. Today we're going to use this fun jar stamp set. It comes with a lot of different fillers, the outline of the jar as well as coordinating dies. We're going to use a card base that has the jar opening and then the shaker filler that matches this jar as well. So one technique I want to show you is what if you have a card but you want to incorporate some pattern paper but you still want to use this opening for the jar. So I'm going to show you how you can do this really easily. What you need is you need a piece of pattern paper and I've left it larger than the card itself because I will come back and mount it on the card to get the perfect piece. I will center it on the design of my pattern paper so that it has a nice even design. I leave room on both sides so that again I can come back and cut it. I found this is easier to do than trying to match it in the beginning and then just run it through your die cut machine. So then what you end up with is you have the piece of pattern paper with the shape cut out and you also have a piece here. So you could actually, if you wanted to, put this piece on the inside of your card and build your card from there, which is adorable. But let me show you what you can do to add it to the front of your card. So just loosely place it onto your card. And then what I will do is I will lift here and find the bottom and then I will place a pencil mark right there on the bottom and I'll trim off that bottom piece and then I'll repeat the same steps and what I'm doing is I am slowly eliminating extra pieces. And the reason why I do it this way is that so I get a perfectly centered piece on the part of the design of the pattern paper that I want. So it's just a way that I control it. There are a couple of different ways to accomplish this same look. But I always come back and check to make sure that I'm getting the placement how I want. I'm gonna do that final cut. So it's a kind of a make it work situation. So then you end up with pattern paper that fits perfectly on the front of your card. So there's no reason why you can't use pattern paper on these shaker cards. You just need to use the coordinating dies to cut that opening piece. So let's go ahead and adhere that to the front of our card. And I love this gingham. This is from our Garden Harvest collection. And it's just a really, really charming piece. So there you have pattern paper. This is a great way to start building your card. Now we can start stamping and adding additional embellishments now that the pattern paper has been placed on the card. So on this particular stamp, the jar outline actually fits along the very outside edge of that die cut piece. So you'll want to place that on the top of your card and you'll want your card to be open. So again, I'm using a misty stamping tool and I'll just pick up that image and I'm using a grayish brown. I don't want it to stand out too much. A couple of options, you could do a black outline or you could use an ink that is slightly darker than that kind of aqua teal in the pattern paper. But I wanted it to be really, really subtle. And this is what I'm talking about. It's just a really, really subtle outline for the jar. So we're going to build a bouquet for the inside or rather the top of our jar. So I've just taken a few of the flowers and the leaves that I like and I've placed it on some white cardstock inside my Misty stamping machine. Now when I'm doing stamping like this, I like 110 pound weight smooth cardstock. And that's just a suggestion. You can use textured cardstock, just turn it over to the smooth side. And then I'm just using colors that were inspired by the collection. So I have this yummy purple color and I'm going to stamp several of the flowers in purple and I can add ink at the same time to the green pieces. And then we can just stamp them right onto the paper. And if I want to go deeper, I can totally go deeper with the color. Just add more ink. Same with the leaves. 
and then just come back in and stamp it a second time. So you can go as deep and as dark as you want just by adding more color. And this is what starts to happen. Now do this with as many colors as you want for, you, for your bouquet. You can actually keep the stamps exactly like this and just clean them off and add additional ink. But basically get as many flowers and leaf elements as you think you will need to fill the top of your card. So I'll go ahead and stamp a few and then I'll show you what they look like. So again, just stamp a bunch. I realized fairly quickly on that I was going to use more purple, so I did more purple and then I did kind of a coral pink and some yellow and lots of leaves. Now I could spend a lot of time fussy cutting these or I can just use the coordinating dies that go with these flowers and leaf elements to fussy cut them. So to do this step, you'll need a die cut machine. I'm using my Sizzix Big Shot and I will just go ahead and cut these out. So you can see just by using the coordinating dies, you can make quick work of adding little die cut pieces to your shaker cards. And I'm just using the flowers here. And then I will start building a bouquet. The key here is that you can go right up to the edge here, but do not place anything over there because the shaker will come through and it's going to have some dimension. So we'll place the purples first. And I'm using the three different, three of the flowers that I really liked. And then I'll fill in with some pink. And there is no wrong way to kind of build here. You're just playing with things and kind of getting a feel for what you like. Another thing that I'll do is rather than just use glue dots, I'll add an adhesive foam dot and I'll fill it in a little bit like this. Another purple. And just fill it until it feels right to you. Now I'll come back and add the greenery. And I like to typically use two different kinds of greenery. I just think it looks really pretty that way. But really this is just kind of how you like things to look. And some of the elements can point down. Again, just make sure that you're not covering where the shaker piece is gonna come through. So I'll get about to this place and then I'll look at it and see if I feel like there's anything that needs to be added. I'll add one more green piece. And I typically die cut and cut a few more than I think I'll need just because I think that looks really pretty that way. Move this purple over a little bit so I have room for a yellow. So I kind of overstuff mine a little bit. Again, these colors were inspired by the actual collection. Now if you have extras left over, set them aside. You can always use them as jar fillers. You can use them for the inside of your card or you can use them for a different project. So I want to have the same image on the inside, rather the jar image. So I'm just going to lightly trace this with my pencil. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll open my card here and I'll use my magnets and then we'll use that same stamp image. Now remember that the image itself is going to go on the outside of the image. So play around with it. Make sure you get your placement how you want. And then go ahead and stamp that. Again, I'm going to use the same colors I did on the outside, which is a grayish brown color. Make sure that's sticking down. Let me that up. I'll stamp that piece here. Now, before I move that inside piece, or rather erase that inside trace piece, there is another piece to this jar that I want to point out that you can stamp. And it is on the stamp set. And it is actually this piece right here. And it can be used 
for the lid if you want, which is what I'm going to do. And I just placed it inside that pencil mark. I'm going to use the same color and you'll only be able to lightly see this in the shaker card. So once I have that done, you could also do it at the bottom for a shadow. I just wanted to kind of make it look like the jar lid. I'm erasing that pencil line. Get all of that pencil line erased. So you can see it can be used here. It could also go here at the bottom for some jar detail. So you can use it either way. I just wanted it to look a little bit like the jar. So this is how it looks closed. So one of the fillers that you can use from some of our filler pieces are wood veneer pieces. And I have several in this container here. You can see some of our different elements. We have little flowers, we have outlined words, we have little, these are little feathers little arrows, lots of different ones to choose from. I thought it would be fun to do a message one. So you can just pick out from some of the different word phrases. I just think they're so cute. So hello. And I'm just picking some kind of happy phrases. Some of the phrases are more words that you probably wouldn't put inside like uh and the and this. So pick out words that make sense for the phrase that you want to use and this is great for a filler. So another thing I want to point out is that you don't have to just use one filler type. So I have pulled phrases that I like. I'm also going to use some of our beads and I store mine according to color and I just want to pick a blue with that blue that looks like water so I'm just kind of thinking ahead here so I'm going to mix these two so we'll pull off the adhesive backing on the jar piece oh it's going flying I'll we'll turn this over and then I'm going to place my phrases in first because I think they're the most important and I want them to write on the top and it looks like I got one two three four five in there again I don't like to fill it completely and then we'll add the blue beads around it for water. And then we will press that back piece into the front piece, capturing that adhesive. Make sure we got it nice and tight. Okay, so you can see how cute is that? So don't feel like you can't combine. See how darling that is when you open it? So combine different pieces and use as many as you want. Again, I like mine a little bit less, so it kind of floats to the bottom here, but these are uplifting messages for my friends, and I combined the beads and the wood veneer shapes. So the inside of the card is a perfect place to add any additional stamped pieces you have left over. And we'll just add a few here. And don't feel like you have to stamp any more than you already have. Just kind of work in what you have and make it work. And this one is going to be a little bit off-centered. It's going to be more here on the right. And that's okay. So whatever works. And then if you don't like it, so say I've changed my mind before that sticks down too much, just move it. So really you can do whatever you want, but now we have this great element on the inside as well as the outside. So let's add a sentiment to finish off our card. So one thing that you can do that is fun is you can add embellishments right on top of the clear shaker piece. And we're going to do that by using the tag stamp and die as well as this cute little heart here. So on my misty stamping piece, I have a piece of craft cardstock and I have a piece of white cardstock and I have the tag stamp and I have the heart stamp. So we'll ink up the tag with a nice dark brown ink. And then on the heart, we'll add that same kind of happy pink that we did before. And I'm gonna add a little bit 
more pink to that heart. You can see when I use the Misty stamping tool, sometimes I get ink all over the place. Super easy to clean that up. I just take a baby wipe and I just wipe it down. It just wipes right off. It's so great. So now you can see that I have the stamped tag and I have the stamped heart. And then there are coordinating dies for both of these shapes that we can use in our manual die cut machine. So here's our little tag. Now I have a little hole punch and you can see it's pretty small. I'm going to use the guide that's in that die and stamp and I'll tie just some crochet twine to it. And I'll tie it into a bow because I think this card is feminine and a bow would be cute. As you can see, it's just tied with a bow. Cut off excess pieces of twine. And then I have my little stamped heart and I stamped it in the same pink that I used for the flowers so that everything looks really good. And we'll place that on the tag. And now the tag can go right on top of that jar. So that's what I mean about just adding things to the top of the shaker, is that some of these embellishments, including phrases, can be placed right on top of the, the jar or whatever shaker you are using. So I've cut another piece of pattern paper from the Garden Harvest Collection, and I am planning to put it on the bottom of the front of the card, and I want to add a sentiment to it. So when I have a strip like this, I'm going to use the lines on this grid piece of my Misty Stamping Tool. And then I'll place my piece, or stamp rather, that I want to use on top of that. If you are not using the Misty Stamping Tool, be sure to use a grid stamp, or a grid, a grid clear acrylic block rather. Say that three times fast because then you'll get a nice placement for your phrase. So you can see that my phrase fits perfectly on this strip. So now that it's stamped and I've allowed it to dry for just a few minutes, I can add that piece right to the bottom of my card and I want it to ride right along the bottom edge of that shaker. And then here is what the inside looks like. Now, I think it would be fun to write your sentiment below this jar. I'm not adding another piece, but I did want to show you that when you add stuff to the top of the shakers, when you open the shaker card, it stays on the shaker. So that is just a fun element. So thank you for joining me for the shaker card tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our fun videos. And visit our website and blog for additional inspiration.